In today's video, we're gonna be talking about zoom transitions. So whether you're in fake New York and Las Vegas or you zoom out of that area and decide, hey, I wanna take a little Google Earth trip to zoom into the real Times Square in New York City or to do a transition back from Times Square to my edit bay here in Austin, Texas. The concept behind how to do these kind of smooth, trendy, seamless transitions is the same. And that's to solve the fundamental video editing challenge of real estate. Obviously, I don't mean this kind of real estate. In fact, that wasn't a real sign, it was just masked over. Uh, what I really mean is when you zoom out in Premiere Pro, how do you fill in this real estate? Well, the solution is somewhat easy to implement once you understand how it works. Imagine this is your full frame that you have available to fill your clip with, right? To demonstrate what I mean, here are two shots edited together with a zoom transition. Now let me play that again, but I'll stop it at the transition point. And it's right here that we can see the solution to our quote unquote real estate conundrum. If you can't see it yet, let me elaborate this way. To fill this empty black void of trendy transitionness, what we do is replicate the video frame so it surrounds that clip. Next, we wanna make the edges of our main center clip seamless. So we'll do a mixture of rotating and flipping the duplicates in a way that mirrors the sides. There is now double the amount of space to scale your clips without revealing any black outline. And this setup may look odd at first, but what sells the effect is motion blur and the speed at which you zoom in or out. Now that we have a basic understanding of how these zoom transitions work, I wanna show you two ways in which I would go about creating a smooth, seamless zoom in and zoom out transition inside Premiere Pro. The first way would be to build your transition manually from start to finish, which I am going to show you in a second. Or if you wanna save time, what you just witnessed was the amount of time it took me to apply a smooth zoom in and zoom out to the clips that you saw at the very beginning of this video utilizing my preset pack. Altogether, there's 70 different transitions in that preset pack. Six of those are zooms. That's all I kind of want to plug about my preset pack. If you want to learn more about it, it's in the description below. I just wanted to offer an option to those of you that wanted to get these kind of effects into your edits as quick as possible. But if you want to learn how to do it yourself, let's dive right into it. For this, we'll be creating a smooth zoom out transition here and a smooth zoom in transition here. A lot of the steps for both of these transitions are going to be similar, so I'm going to primarily focus on showing you the steps when I'm zooming out, and then if there are any differences, I'll show that to you with the zoom in transition. And if you're curious as to how I made this clip, all I'm doing is using Google Earth Studio to create this camera movement from one location to the other. If you're interested in a more in-depth video about something like that, let me know in the comments down below. Because this Google Earth Studio clip already has natural zoom built into it, I'll also create a second example showing you how I would keyframe a stationary clip. Let's start with the sequence settings. This transition is possible with any resolution, but if you're following along, my sequence settings are 4K UHD with a frame size of 3840 by 2160 and a frame rate of 23.976. If you're using any other settings than this, the numbers for your position scale and anchor points will be different than mine. Also make sure that your clips are the same frame size as your sequence. If they're not, just scale them to where you need them to be and then nest them. Then you can continue to follow along. I'll start here by moving the playhead to the edit point where I want the zoom out to occur. Holding shift, I'll hit the left arrow key four times to go 20 frames to the left. Split the clip. Hold option on Mac or alt on Windows. Click and drag the clip to the layer above. We don't need this duplicate just yet, so I'll highlight the top clip, right click, and unenable. I'll repeat these same steps for the clip that we're zooming into. Move the playhead to the center, go 20 frames to the right by holding shift and hitting the arrow key four times, split the clip. Hold option on Mac or alt on Windows, click and drag to duplicate, right click and unenable. Now you may think in order to get a look like this, we need to copy and paste nine versions of the clip, position, rotate, and then nest that whole sequence. But thankfully we can accomplish this same look with only one clip. We're gonna start with this zoom out bottom clip. In the effects window, find replicate and put it on the clip. Next, find mirror and apply this effect four times to the clip. Last, search for transform and apply that to the clip. In the effects controls window, under replicate, 
Type 3. And we're getting pretty close to the look, but now we need to achieve that seamless edge on the middle section. As a visual demonstration of how to use these four mirror effects to achieve that seamless edge, I'll move the reflection center to the middle of the frame and overlay a protractor PNG file. That's right, we're getting back into grade school math. Jokes aside, watch what happens when I rotate the reflection angle 90 degrees. This allows us to take the reflection center and position it at the bottom seam. If I undo that and rotate it another 90 degrees to a total of 180 degrees, we end up on this side, allowing us to adjust the center to the left seam. Hopefully you're catching on that if we start at zero degrees and go in intervals of right angles or 90 degrees, we'll be able to create a seamless mirror edge on all four sides of the clip. So on the four mirror effects, we're gonna go in intervals of 90 degrees. Our first reflection angle is zero degrees. Our second is 90 degrees. Our third is 180 degrees, and our fourth is 270 degrees. I'll toggle the effects off for the bottom three. Our first reflection angle is zero degrees. Click and drag the X parameter till you create a seam on the right side. And for me, that happens to be 2559. Theoretically, I believe this is supposed to be 2560, but that creates a slight gap. So 2559 it is. Toggle the 90 degree mirror on. This one is different in that it's a horizontal mirror. So we need to manipulate the Y parameter. Moving the reflection center may seem confusing at first, but you'll know which way to go because if you try and adjust it the wrong way, like say I adjust the X, nothing happens. If I try and adjust the Y up, I start to see black underneath the clip. So I know that I need to adjust this one down to create the bottom seam at 1439. Toggle on the 180 degree mirror and adjust the X to 1280. Toggle on the 270 degree mirror and adjust the Y to 720. We now have those beautiful seamless edges. So before I move on, I'm gonna copy all of this information to the zoom in bottom clip. Right click the clip we've been working on, hit copy. Right click the zoom in bottom clip and click paste attributes. Make sure each parameter is getting copied and hit okay. Now, if you're only looking to do the zoom in transition, all you would need to do is follow the same steps I did for the zoom out clip but build them here on the zoom in clip. Now I'll show you how to keyframe the movement of the zoom out and then show you how to keyframe the zoom in. First, make sure you're working with the transform effect and not the motion effect. Because these have a lot of the same parameters, people sometimes get confused. I'll go one frame in from the edit point and toggle on animation for my scale. Next, I'll hold shift and click the left arrow to go 15 frames to the left and create another keyframe. For a zoom out, scale the first keyframe up to 300%. I'll open the scale up so you can see the next step. Highlight both keyframes, right click, ease in. Right click again, ease out. This gives the velocity a smooth exponential curve. I like to take this movement a step further by pulling the handles for the keyframes towards the center like this. Next, add motion blur by deselecting use composition shutter angle, and you can add more motion blur by raising the shutter angle to a total of 360, but I think that's a little too much, so I stick to around 180. Now I'm gonna move this keyframe over one to the very edge of the clip. Wow! <laughs> it's almost like I'm a superhero flying off into the other New York. Video editing, it's the coolest. All right, just like before, we're gonna apply these same concepts, except in reverse for the zoom in transition. Toggle on the scale, start at 100%, go 15 frames to the right, and scale up to 300%. Highlight both keyframes, right click, ease in, right click, ease out, pull the handles of the keyframes towards the center, deselect use shutter angle, and change it to 180 degrees. And now it looks a little something like this. So cool, right? Let me move on to why I had you duplicate the clips to that top layer. If I zoom in on the program monitor and enable the top clip, hopefully you're seeing that difference in quality from when the top clip is on and when it is off. The reason our bottom layer looks lower quality is because it is, it's zoomed in 300%. So to fix this, we put this second layer at 100% to maintain quality throughout the transition. If that kind of doesn't make any sense, let me showcase to you what I mean. Copy the transform effect from the bottom layer and paste it into the effects controls of the top layer. Next, we need to adjust the ratio at which the zoom occurs. So instead of starting at 300%, we change it to 100%. And instead of zooming out to 100%, we need to zoom out to a third of the size or 33.3%. 
If I move the playhead to the middle of the zoom out and turn off the bottom layer, you can see that this top full resolution clip is taking up the middle while the bottom lower resolution clip is used to fill in all of that negative space around it, thus helping us maintain a higher resolution throughout the zoom transition. Again, for the zoom in portion of this, let's repeat these steps, but reverse the keyframes. So copy and paste the transform effect from the bottom clip to the top clip. And on the top clip, you start at 33.3% and zoom into 100%. The next effect I like to put on top of all of this is this kind of lens bending. So as you're zooming in and out, it kind of like opens up or like, like you're pulling on the frame physically. To do this, go to your project bin. In the bottom right, click the new item icon, adjustment layer. Hit okay, right click the adjustment layer and go to speed duration. Here we have time code and I wanna make it 30 frames. So this is hours, minutes, seconds, and frames. In order to make this 30 frames, I'll put 30 in the frame slot. Hit OK. Center the playhead between the two clips of the transition and add a marker. Hold Shift, tap that left arrow key three times to move the playhead 15 frames and drag and drop the beginning of the adjustment layer snapped to the playhead. I also like to click the center marker and with the adjustment layer highlighted, add another marker onto the layer. This way, if you accidentally adjust or move the layer, you can always snap the middle of it back into place. Now go to your effects window and search for lens distortion. Apply it to the adjustment layer, toggle animation on for curvature, and create keyframes for the beginning, middle, and end. Go to the middle keyframe, and you can curve the frame negative however much you want, but let's go to negative 50 to start. And again, highlight them all. Right click, ease in. Right click, ease out. Pull the handles towards the center to mimic the movement that we have on the other keyframes. And now we have this cool frame bending effect as we zoom. I'm just gonna hold option on Mac or Alt on Windows, click and drag this to the zoom in portion to duplicate it above my zoom in transition. Now again, the Google Earth clip doesn't need any zooming in or out because it already has natural zoom built into the clip. So I have a stationary clip here that I'm going to substitute in to showcase how I would keyframe the second half of the zooming out or zooming in. First thing to address is that we're not gonna be doing any more of that seamless edge replication on this clip because it's going to be filling the entire screen throughout the transition. For the transition where we zoom out, go to the year effects, search for transform, add your transform effect to the clip. Toggle animation on for scale, start at 150, go 15 frames to the right and scale down to 100. And now I'm gonna sound like a broken record, highlight those keyframes, ease in, ease out, pull the handles in, deselect use comp shutter angle, and switch that shutter angle to 180. <sighs> Looks really cool to me. Again, things are pretty similar for the transition where we zoom in. To be honest, for this particular case, I could keep this transform effect on throughout the clip, but I'll redo it here just for those of you that are only doing a zoom in. Add the transform effect to the clip, toggle the animation on for scale at the end, raise it to 150. Go 15 frames to the left and scale it down to 100. Highlight those keyframes, right click, ease in, right click, ease out, pull the handles in, deselect use comp shutter angle, switch shutter angle to 180, and here's the final results to all four transitions. If this video was helpful, don't forget to leave that thumbs up. My hope is that you now have the skill set to create your own seamless zoom transitions. Or if you want, you can download my own presets. Remember, that link is in the description below. Until next time, my name's Javier Mercedes, and I hope you're out there living a life of abundance. Bye.